That is for Deen, Al Islam, religion with Allah since time began. That is for Dhik, remembering Allah, and Ra is for the month of Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan. That is for Zakah, to cure our greed, when we give our money to those in need. That is for Salamun Alaikum. Peace be with you. Have you been looking for a new bank where interests play no role? Look no further. Lotus Bank is here to change the game with a breath of fresh air. We'll partner with you to achieve growth and success in almost every facet of your life. Experience a transparent relationship with us. Enjoy the benefits of non-interest banking, zero account maintenance fees, free debit card, one month free banking, Zero interest on financing and ethical investments. Take that bold step now and embrace the opportunities of non-interest banking. Dial star 5405 hash now. You may also download the Lotus Bank app on Google Play or Apple Store and begin your journey of breath of fresh air. Visit lotusbank.com. Lotus Bank. Partner. Progress. Prosper. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, viewers, uh, it's my pleasure welcoming you to this episode. Uh, it's interesting to know that uh, as we are fasting, many of us are actually planning to pay our zakat. And surely it might be a challenge for any of us who doesn't know how to actually go about it. At Zakat and Zakat Foundation, we love to share with you how you can go about this. And that's why this particular topic is being discussed today. The first important thing as somebody who wants to pay zakat is to put your intention forward. Intention is very very important because zakat is one of the pillars of Islam. When you want to pray you come up with your intention. When you go on Hajj you pay you do your intention. Even this Ramadan that we are fasting, most of us have put up our intention to fast for the 30 day or 29 day of Ramadan. So it's very, very important. And our intention should be such that we want to fulfill the obligation of zakat. We want to pay our zakat. We want to be part of that ummah that is making life better for the less privileged member in our society. Of course, you know, intention, you don't say it out, it's in your mind. So that's the very first thing that you need to do, that you want to pay your zakat. That's the intention. Number two is to put up all your sacatable items. What do you mean by sacatable items? These are the items that you are not using for personal use. They are items that you are not used for personal use. You are using them for business or you are preserving them to be used for investment in the future. This includes so many items depending on the type of what you are doing. For example, if you are a salary earner, many of your salary, I mean, some of your salary might be part of your sacatable items. You might have shares, it's part of your sacatable items. You might have building that you rent out, you are collecting rent, it's part of your sacatable item, and so on and so forth. You might have some money that you have borrowed out of some people and they are going to pay you, it's part of your sacatable Words. You might have a uh, gift that somebody gives you, it's also part of your sacatable item. You have gold, you have silver, and so on and so forth. All these are part of your sacatable items. If you are a farmer, your produce are also part of sacatable items. Whatever you are doing, you must have things that you are using for investment or you are using them for business. All these are put as part of your sacatable items. At times, there are some things that you may be using them personally. They might still be subjected to sakat when it, it's outside what we call minimum standard of living for your status. For example, you have four or five cars. Those who are in charge of sakat assessment will know. For your family, maybe a family of four. You don't need more than two vehicles. One for you, one for your wife. And maybe the one for your wife are being used by your children. Fine. Why do you have four cars? If you have it, yes, you can decide to have it. But when they are doing your sakat, when you are calculating your 
zakat. It's part of your zakatable item that you must add to your zakatable items. Just as I've said, it's all about intention. You have sincere intention. Just like Allah have said, Amahumiru ila li abudula mulisina la hudina unafaha wa yukimu no salat wa yutu zakat. Allah has not commanded us any other thing than to be sincere in our religious act, act of our salat when we are praying and equally mention that of zakat. You need to be sincere. You are using your zakat to please Allah and not any other person. And you know for anything you use to please Allah, Allah will reward you in manifold. So you calculate all these zakats, zakatable items and you know what is the worth of the zakatable items that you have. Your second step after you have done this is equally to calculate your liabilities. Those things that you are going to pay, that you are yet to pay them. If you borrowed money and you have not paid it, then it's part of your liability. If you have outstanding school fees for your children that you have not paid, it's part of your liabilities. All those liabilities, you equally put them together as these are the debt on you. These are things that you must pay. Islam encourages us to quickly settle our debts. So my brothers and sisters, our viewers, as much as possible, try to pay up your debt as soon as possible. So you take, you calculate all your liability that you are owing people and that is the step two. So step one, you have calculated your assets, your, your, your sacatable items and step two, you have equally calculate your liability. I hope you are following me. It's important to get these steps as somebody who is attempting to pay his uh, zakat. And the next step, which is the step three, is to subtract your liability from your zakatable item. S take away your liability from your assets. And that gives you the net worth. That is the step three. Step three is you get what you call your net worth. And when you get your net worth, then you move to the next step, which is step four, to determine whether you are liable to pay zakat or not. This is very, very important. And that takes you to what we call nisog, the minimum amount of money you must have before zakat become incumbent on you, before it is compulsory for you to pay your zakat. You must know what we call nisog. Nisog today is calculated as 1.5 4 million naira. That is 1 million 545,000 naira or thereabouts. That is the NISOB as calculated by our foundation, Sakat and Sarakat Foundation. Of course, there are other NISOB outside here which you can use, but that's the NISOB that we have calculated for this year. NISOB continue to change from year to year. So if your net worth is above that or is equal to that amount, that is your total, your net worth is more than that, then you are due to pay zakat. You are due to pay zakat. That is the step four that you determine whether your net worth is more than the sub. If it is more, then you are qualified to pay zakat. And the next step, that is the step five, is now to divide that your net worth by 40. You divide your net worth by 40. For example, if your net worth is 2 million, then you divide 2 million by 40. And if my mathematics is right, that should be 50,000 or thereabouts. 50,000 Naira is just a sarcasm. So on 2 million, you are paying 50,000. On 3 million, you are paying 75,000. On 4 million, you are probably paying 100,000. You can see the amount. It's so small. On 5 million, you are paying 125,000 Naira as Sakat. So, and last, and not, not the least, is the step. Last step is to select administrator for your Sakat. Select those who will manage the Sakat for you. Our foundation, that is what we'll do. We we'll collect this sakat and ensure that rightful beneficiaries are given this sakat. If you have any challenge in calculating your sakat, please don't hesitate to call us. We will be there 
to calculate the zakat for you, to assist you, to get you to know how to do it yourself. And equally help you to calculate the zakat. And most importantly, we will ensure your zakat get to the rightful beneficiary at our foundation. Until the next time when we'll be meeting on this episode, I wish you all the best of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us get the maximum reward of the Ramadan. And I equally pray that Allah accept our zakat and bless our wealth and continue to be with us in all our endeavor. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, Ramadan, that is for zakat to cure our greed. When we give our money to those in need, that is for salamu alaikum. Peace be with you, alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. This is Hajj Mobru Ventures Limited. How can we help you, sir? Can you please tell me about your mode of operations? Hajj Mobru Ventures has been a leading private Hajj and Umrah operator for close to 20 years. At Hajj Mobru Ventures, our pilgrims are our priority. We always provide them with conducive accommodations that are close to haram. So purifying sermons from our League of Clerics, state-of-the-art aircraft, Zihara in Mecca and Medina, competent medical tea. Adja, please tell him about the feeding twice in a day. You are right, ma. This is exactly what I heard from your old client. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, sir. And you will receive a check from me today. Alhamdulillah. This is Ajima Brew Ventures Limited. 9A Wing 1 Abiodo Fashake Crescent. Behind Old Lasso Campus, Idiroko Bus Stop, Ikorodu Road, and Sweet 10 Tafabalewa Square. Telephone 0809 211 3680. Website ajimabruru.com. Simply hospitality, truly spirituality.